In your book, you also talk about there are realities within realities and dimensions within dimensions. Can you explain more on how, how what you mean? Okay, well, first of all, many people get confused when you talk about dimension. Okay, we have three dimensions in our world. It's a 3D reality. Those are geometric dimensions. You can have a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and then, you know, on to tenth, lots of dimensions. But we can only interact with these mathematically. Mathematically, we can compute what's going on in a 10-dimensional space, but we can't observe it. We can't experience it. We can only experience 3D space. Okay? And if you look at the, the Flatland, Flatland was a book by Edward Abbott, I think, back in the late eight, middle 1800s that uh, proposed a, a bunch of beings who lived in two-dimensional world called Flatland. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to understand that there was another dimension, a three-dimensional thing. So you not only can have circles, but you can have spheres. And the book points out just how difficult it is for a Flatlander to see a sphere. You see, they just can't. That sphere is inside them, you know? They, it's, it's really hard. But when I talk about dimensionality, it's not about geometric dimension. But the same rule holds. It's really hard to understand any other dimension but your own because you have no experience there. And remember I said earlier, your reality is based on your interpretation of the data. And if you only have experience in a 3D reality, you don't know how to interpret the data except in a 3D reality. That's the only way you know how to interpret data. So all the data you get, you'll interpret in terms of a 3D reality. It's your limitation, you see, for, for only being able to interpret in terms of 3D. So these other realities are basically just different virtual realities. These other, I call them reality frames. So this, this physical universe of ours is one reality frame. When we dream, that's another reality frame, another virtual reality frame. Okay? Um, when you um, do things like go out of body, um, uh, go to other you know, reality frames that way, even just your imagination. When you just imagine things, if you can imagine yourself doing some other thing, you know, all of that is just another virtual reality, another data stream. So when I talk about different dimensions, I'm really talking about, and, and you experiencing different dimensions, I'm talking about you getting different data streams. One data stream you interpret as this reality. When you're dreaming, you get a different data stream and you interpret it differently in terms of the dreaming reality. So there's lots of other reality frames. And if you wish, we can call these dimensions. You know, a dimension now is, is not a, a geometric dimension. It's just a, a different, like a different world. So when you, when you daydream, you are creating a virtual reality. In your mind, and if you're a, if you daydream in color, and if your daydreams are complex, it can be a very complex reality. It can have all sorts of things. It can have other being, beings in it, have people you know in it, and they can be doing all sorts of interactive things. So you can create that kind of a virtual reality. Again, it's called a virtual reality just because its its basis is information. A reality that is information based is a virtual reality. To be information-based, we say that it's computed. Okay, now again, computed doesn't mean there's a little man with a calculator. It just means that it's based on information that has to be produced, and we call that computed. So it's a computed reality, and if it's an information-based reality, it's a computed reality. That we wrap all that up into the name virtual reality. So that's what we say. So when you daydream, you are creating a virtual reality. You're creating the data, okay? and you're creating the picture that you see, and you interpret it. So that is a virtual reality. And we can do that because we are consciousness. Consciousness can create data. You see? So that's our own virtual reality, and we can play in that imaginary virtual reality, which is fun. Now, besides that, there are two other ways that we can get data. Uh, 
one, as I said, we make it up ourselves, our, our imagination. We produce it. The other way is that somebody else makes it up. Okay? If you have ideas in your mind, okay, you can project those to me. Uh, you can, uh, if I'm sensitive, I can pick those up. We call that telepathy. But we can do that on a much general thing. Uh, the, the new age people call that vibes. Oh, they've got good vibes or bad vibes. It just means that we are all the time connected to all the other consciousness that we're interacting with. We're connected. We get things from them besides body language and spoken language. We get consciousness language. We get telepathic language from all the people we meet. There's sometimes people we just really like right away, and sometimes there's people we just don't, and we can't really come up with a good reason. They've done nothing or said nothing that we shouldn't really like them, but we just don't. And that's because we have this communication between consciousness all the time. Now, if you learn to train your mind to get rid of the noise, you can become more aware of these things. If you don't train your mind to get rid of the noise, so you have a higher signal of noise, you're totally unaware of these things. You do it just the same. You still collect the information, but you don't do it knowingly. You kind of do it in the background. It's like a program's running in the background, you're not aware of it. So we call this some, by words like empathy. We have empathy for people, okay? We, that doesn't just mean that we are nice people that, that uh, you know, think about those other people and say, oh, poor person, you know, I have empathy for you. It, that would be at the intellectual level. See, again, that's acting. That's not what I'm talking about. We have empathy, we care. Somebody's having a hard time and we feel for them. It's a feeling, it's a caring, it's a being thing. You see, if it's just intellectual, now you're acting as if you have empathy. You don't really have empathy. You're just acting like you have empathy. Oh, so-and-so had a really hard day. All right, let's be nice to them. Well, that's all intellectual. But if you feel that, and you have this, you know, you just want to give them a hug, tell them everything's all right, because you just, you can feel that, that pain or that stress that they have, and you care about them, that's different than the intellectual thing, you see. So that's what I'm talking about. Uh, again, it's at the, what I call the being level, not the intellectual level. So we learn to care about other people. We read other people's feelings and their moods, and we sense what's going on in them at deeper levels other than just what they show in body language and what they tell us about in spoken language. Well, that's because we're all connected. Again, you learn how to get rid of the noise, how to get out of your intellectual state into a being level state, and all of this information can open up to you just almost as clearly and as accurately as our spoken language does, or our body language does. So all that's available to us as consciousness. But that's, a, that's another aspect of being conscious. You're not just trapped here in this physical reality, physical with quotes around it, physical reality that's really a virtual reality. You're not just stuck here. You can do other things. You can create your own realities. You can, uh, you can some people create them and live in them. You know, they, they create them and uh, they end up just living in those realities. You can interact with other people. So that's the second way. Other people can give you information and you give them information, which is what we just talked about. The third way is that the larger consciousness system itself, okay, you might call that the operating system. You know, it makes the server, you know, the server comes from that. So that can also talk to you, talk to you, talk in quotes. That can also give you information and you can give it information. So those are, the, those are your three data sources. You know, the larger consciousness system, other IUOCs and yourself. So all of the information you get will come from one of those three sources. But you will never know which. The data doesn't come to you with little tags on it that says, you made this up. Oh, this is from the system. Oh, this is from your Aunt Susie, you know, another IUOC. You'll never get tags with it. Well, eventually you begin to sort it out, but it takes a lot of experience and a lot of practice. 
but you'll never get to the point that you can sort it out perfectly. You just don't know. So you get information, you'll interpret it based on your own experience, but you'll have to use your own intellect and your own free will to decide what to do about it. And in that choice that you have to make, that's where you get to grow up, evolve, or de-evolve. You see, because we have all these choices. Okay, here comes information out of my world. Okay, some of it's from the server. Some of it's, you know, is each other. Some of them I make up myself. What do I do with it? How do I, how do I learn from that to help me level up? Get rid of my ego, get rid of my fear, get rid of my belief. And yes, belief goes in there with it. Belief is not a good thing, it traps you. Once you believe something, you stop, you, you stop asking questions about it. You stop, you know, you close yourself off from any further information because you've already got the answer, you got to believe. So belief is, the, is not a good thing. And I would tell all the people listening, don't believe anything I tell you. To believe it isn't useful. Don't disbelieve it, that's not useful. Find out, you see. If it works for you, if it's something that helps you understand your world and helps you go from that struggling person to that happy person, well, good, use it, but don't believe it. And if it doesn't work out for you, then don't use it. You're not ready yet for that. Go live your life however you live it. So that's an important thing. I'm not trying to convince people to believe what I tell them. I don't want them to believe what I tell them. I want them to think about it, see how it applies to their life, and if they want more evidence that what I'm saying works, it's there, just go find out. All you have to do is get rid of that noise in your mind, learn to control your intellect and so you can step out of it, and you'll see there's another whole world of reality that'll open up for you. So that's, I guess, a good introduction. That's a very good introduction. And I, I think it's important to have an open mind uh, and then explore it yourself. Absolutely. One of my favorite uh, uh, sound bites is you have to be open-minded and skeptical. You need to be both. If you are just open-minded and not skeptical, you'll probably be led down some, you know, la-la lane, you know, and... Uh, what do they call it? Woo-woo. You know, you'll be led to, you know, to woo-woo bill. If you are just skeptical and not open-minded, you'll be rigid and you won't ever grow because you can't take in any more information. 